Brian Wansink is author of this book, Mindless Eating. He's director of the Food and Brand Lab at Cornell University, and he's here with me, and we are going to experience mindless eating. What exactly, hi, what exactly is mindless eating? Well, mindless eating is eating more than we think we're eating and enjoying it a lot less than we, than we otherwise would. You mean we can't keep track of how much we're eating? No, the typical person makes 200 decisions about food a day. But if you were to ask them, they'd believe they made about 15. But in reality, just for breakfast, really? well, just for breakfast, they decide what cereal to have, whether to pour one bowl or two bowls, skim milk, whole milk, to have a refill. There's 12 decisions that are made before you even take a bite. Wow, okay, well, we've got some food here. Yeah. Uh, what might be influencing me or you to eat more than we think we should? Well, let's look at how much we're gonna like it. I can guarantee you're gonna like this a lot more than you like this because this is poached eggs on English muffins. This, on the other hand, is eggs florentine. It's described uh, that, that it has Norwegian salmon. It's described in a lot of detail. <laughs> just, reading, just reading that description off the menu is gonna make your expectations that you're gonna like the food higher. Having those expectations higher is gonna make your taste buds obediently follow. So, it, so even if it doesn't taste good, if I'm impressed by the description, I'll eat more of it? You may not eat more of it, but you're gonna like it a whole lot more. I mean, okay. one thing we found, even with wine, if we give people wine that says it's from California, yeah. they enjoy the food a lot more that they're eating with it. Really? If we tell them it's from North Dakota, <laughs> even though it's the same wine, you know, they don't like the food as much, they end up finishing earlier, and they end up not making reservations very soon. <laughs> now, one obvious thing here is that, that we, have we have really approximately the same meals. Yeah. So I've got a few onions you don't have, but your plate is about twice as big as mine. What does that do? Well, what happens is that we find that when people serve themselves onto a, onto a bigger plate, they end up putting a lot more food on, typically about 30% more, because look, I mean, that looks like a really nice big meal. This, yeah. geez, this looks like barely an appetizer, in fact, to make these plates look similarly full, I mean, I'm gonna have to add a few more potatoes there. Now, I think it's looking a little bit better now. But so, this, yeah, so we make judgments based on whether there's empty spaces there? Yeah, it's a very subtle bias, because what it does, is it suggests to us what the appropriate amount is to eat. And regardless of how tuned in we think we are to our eating decisions, we will serve 25 to 35% more under a larger plate than we will a small That's plate. That's a huge amount though, 25 to 35%. It's unbelievable. In some cases with some foods, it can be up to about 150 calories more per serving, which over the course of a year, 150 calories more each day is 15 pounds heavier at the end of the year. Boy, that's uh, supersizing taken to, <laughs> <laughs> taken to a different dimension. Okay, so what else? I mean, what, what, it, this looks very straightforward to me. Food on a plate, sure the sizes are different, but what else might be operating here? Well, something else that's operating is anytime we think something... You don't mind if I start eating? Oh, man, I... <laughs> Mindlessly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. One other thing that's happening is anytime we see something that we believe is healthy, there's a health halo that follows that entire food and typically makes us believe it has fewer calories and it typically makes us overeat. Like I wanted some tomatoes. Look at this. So I got some uh, sauteed tomatoes. Yeah. Now I'm going to believe this is an incredibly healthy thing for me to eat. And mm -hmm. I guess relative to the french fries it is healthy. But yep. this is going to have a whole lot more calories than we think because what's going on is uh, there's a, a basic sort of halo that surrounds anything that we believe is good for like us. Like a tomato. Like a tomato. How could a tomato be unhealthy? Oh, well, I guess if it's cooked in uh, its own weight of olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you do, uh, you don't just sort of look at people uh, operating restaurants, but you, you do experiments in your lab. Can oh, you give yeah, me a sense sure. of the kinds of things that you do? Want some bacon? Well, of course. I'm, now, well, one of the things we do... Should we, I only have like one strip of... <laughs> so that I can have the rest. That's right. <laughs> well, one of the things we do, one of the things we do in our lab, our lab is set up with one-way mirrors, it's set up with hidden cameras, it's got scales underneath the table, what we can do is we can do experiments to see how the lighting affects how much somebody eats, how the number of people they're eating with influences how much they eat, how candlelight makes them eat more, and things like this. And what it enables us to do is to tell people what cues they can change in their own house so they can eat less and enjoy food more. Now, but it's my, I mean, the title of your book is Mindless Eating. Is it really possible for people to sort of step back from that and say, I'm being influenced by all these things that you mentioned in the book, I can correct that? Or, or, do, is it, or is it just too easy to fall into the same old habits? It's really easy to fall into the same habits, so that's why the key thing to do is just to reorganize, what we call re-engineer your house 
so that you don't have to make these decisions all the time, so that you're eating off of smaller plates, you're pouring in your tall, skinny glasses rather than short, wide glasses, you're moving the candy bowl six feet away from you rather than leaving it on your desk. That's the sort of thing that a person is very easy to do that's a mindless solution to this. So Brian, but what if I'm not in that controlled environment of home, I'm out at a restaurant? What should I do? Well, in addition to your entree, you can eat one other item. You can have an appetizer, you can have a side dish, you can have a dessert. You can't have all three. Okay, I'll take it seriously. Thanks, Brian. Dr. Brian Wensink is director of the Food and Brand Lab at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. He's also author of Mindless Eating, Why We Eat More Than We Think. That's an awful lot of calories to be consuming Christmas dinner, and who knows whether you're actually going to stick to that. So when the inevitable Christmas pictures are taken, 